Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Anxiety, depression, eating disorders, they are just some of the mental health issues affecting thousands of children and young people nowadays. And MPs are warning that mental health plans are failing a generation. It's thought that one in ten children in England, aged between 5 and 16, has a diagnosable mental health condition. The government's trying to ensure children get medical help within four weeks, as well as more access to mental health support in schools. But a committee of MPs has branded the plans unambitious and said they wouldn't provide help to most of the children who need it. Our social affairs correspondent Alison Holt has been speaking to three young women whose lives have been affected by mental health issues. I was 13 when I first went to the doctors about it and was told, you have anxiety and depression and just sort of shuffled out. I got put on a waiting list for counselling but actually the waiting list took so long that things had got a lot worse by that point. They just didn't take me seriously enough. They kind of ushered me out of the room as if I wasn't important and kind of blamed it on being a teenager growing up and hormones. Jenny, Kat and Tamana all struggled with mental health issues as children. Each asked for help and each feels they were let down. For them, the biggest issue highlighted in today's report by MPs is that the government's plans to improve children's mental health services won't happen quickly enough for those who need support now. To say that some areas will have this by 2025 isn't enough. Some areas isn't good enough. That long of a time isn't good enough. That's skipping almost a whole generation of young people that need help and support now. I don't think there's enough support while somebody is waiting to be referred or while somebody's waiting for a phone call or an appointment. It does feel like there's so much talking about mental health at the moment, but no action. It's a lot about kind of speaking out and feeling OK, um, feeling like it's OK to reach out for help. And yet, you know, we have people that are reaching out for help and then being told that they can't have any help. So the government would say that it is going to transform services for young people with mental health issues. I don't believe it. That's my response. <laughs> They're out of touch. They don't understand at all the pressures that young people are facing today because they didn't exist when they were in school, when they were leaving school looking for work. All three of you sound angry. Well, we're angry because this is our lives and our friends' lives and we're sick and tired of being told that we're on another six or nine month waiting list before we can get any help. You only get one life and you know I think I think what Tamana was saying earlier about our generation I just feel like we've drawn the short straw. I think the government needs to sit up and actually listen listen to the young people listen to the professionals listen to the experts and actually realize that this this plan is not good enough at all. They're now taking part in a new youth access campaign to ensure young people are more involved in designing the services they need. The government rejects the criticisms of its plans and insists there will be extra money and staff to provide the right sort of support for children when they need it. Alison Holt, BBC News. I've been